Hi there, I'm Dr. Mark Stickney and the exercise we are about to do is going to be drawing up a medication into a syringe with a, with a hypodermic needle. And for this exercise we are going to pretend that we already have calculated up the drug volume and dosage that we need. The first step of this procedure is going to be to wash our hands and play, put on some, uh, some exam gloves as we get ready to draw up the medication. And you don't necessarily have to do this routinely with every medication, but there are certain ones that you would not want to have your, uh, your skin come into contact with. And those are going to be some of our, uh, there are some antibiotics and certainly some chemotherapy drugs that you would always want to make sure that you are wearing gloves. So we are going to, as part of the exercise, go through that. So the first thing that we will do is wash our hands and a few things to remember is that we're going to use warm water and we're going to sing the birthday song so we get 15 seconds of washing our hands and I am singing the birthday song to myself while I'm talking to you and I'm going to make sure that I especially get into my interdigital spaces between my fingers where bacteria and dirt really like to hide. I'm going to rinse off my hands. We'll get a paper towel. We'll dry our hands off. And then we'll use that paper towel to turn off the water. Now, we do not, we're not, we're not, we're not we're try that again. We do not have to be sterile for drawing up this medication, but again, we are, for part of this exercise, going to imagine that we don't want to get any of it on us. So we're going to take some exam gloves now and go ahead and put those on. And now it is, you'll, now it is key that we do have dry hands because it will be very hard to put these gloves on when your hands are still a little bit wet. So dry hands are key. And it also helps to get your fingers in the right holes. There we go. All right. Now, the judge will have told you what, uh, what medication type and the amount that you are going to draw up. So we will, we will imagine that this, is our, that this is our drug right here. For this demonstration, this is a bottle of sterile water, but um, we will imagine that this is some type of a medication. And the first thing that we are going to do is double check the label. We're going to make sure that it is indeed the medication that we're supposed to draw up and the correct concentration. Lots of drugs will come in bottles that look exactly the same, but one bottle will have the medication be 10 milligrams per milliliter. Another drug will have the concentration, another bottle will have the concentration be 100 milligrams per milliliter. And if you draw up the wrong one, you've just given that animal a 10 times overdose of whatever the medication was. And that, that can have uh, deadly consequences. So we're going to double check that label. We're going to double check the concentration. And we are also going to double check the expiration date on this label and make sure that we do not have a medication that is beyond its expiration date. Met expired medications lose their efficacy and some of them actually will develop toxic byproducts as a result as they get older. So we always want to double check that. Now, we have a needle and a syringe and these are still fresh out of the package. They are still inside their sterile containers. So I am not concerned about defects in these. I would, I would not want to use a needle or a syringe that was already opened up that it was not one that I had just opened up for the purpose of for the purpose of drawing up my medication. So, so I'm happy that these look good. Now, I am going to attach the needle to the syringe. Nice firm pressure so I get a good airtight seal. And now I'm going to take my medication this particular bottle still has a, st a sterile top on it. Yours may not. That just pops right off. And then there's a rubber seal that will allow us to, to draw up the medication. Okay. 
We don't ever take the medication and start doing this. Okay? That's going to make air bubbles inside there. And there are some, some medications like insulin, this will ruin it and you will not get accurate, accurate dosing of your pet by shaking it up. It will destroy the molecules in there. So we never do that. We're going to take this and we gently turn it upside down. We are going to imagine now that this has been open for a while, sitting on a shelf. So before we put a needle in here, we're going to take a little alcohol swab. We're going to swab off that rubber stopper. Get some, any surface debris off there that's built up on there. We're going to take our syringe and we're going to go ahead and break the rubber seal. So the, when these first come out of the package, the rubber, the, because of the sterilization process, the rubber sticks to the plastic. So the first thing that we're going to do is break that seal and we're going to pretend for this exercise that we need to draw up one milliliter of drug. So we'll draw that up to the one milliliter mark. Check. Okay. Take off the cap. We turn the bottle over. Insert the needle into the plunger. And now we're going to draw up that drug a little past the one milliliter mark because I'm going to get some air in this syringe. Now I'm going to tap out some of that air and make sure that I get the correct dosage, one milliliter. Take a look at this. I make sure I don't have any big air bubbles in there. If I do, I'll try to tap those out. If I'm happy with this dosage, I'm in great shape. If it's not actually correct, I can reinsert this needle and draw up a little bit more. Accuracy is key though. That's the most important thing is to make sure you have the correct amount. So I now have my one milliliter of my drug. And we are now ready to give this, we are now ready to give this injection to our pet. Good. We want to talk for a few minutes about needle safety. In human medicine, being stuck with a needle is a big deal and it happens frequently. And they, they, they take lots of safeguards to make sure that that, that, that that never happens because clearly diseases can spread from one human to another. With our veterinary patients, not only do they also have diseases that could spread from, uh, from them to us, but we also risk the chance of just getting an infection in general by sticking ourselves with a hypodermic needle. And there are also some medications that we would not want to have injected into our own bodies that are safe for dogs. They're not safe for us. So a capped needle, that's good. Okay. You, can, you, can, you can be less concerned about that. But once that, uh, once that cap is off, now I've got, I've got a needle and its only job is to go through skin and into things. So I always need to be aware of where that needle is all the time. Okay. Also, this needle is supposed to be sterile. So it should not be set on a table and allowed to roll around, be in contact with other things so that it gets contaminated. Okay. This needle, the cap is off of this needle strictly so that I can inject my medication and as I do that, I'm not distracted and talking to everyone else or talking to you as I do it, okay? I'm going to pay attention to where that plunger is as I, as I place that needle and I'm using nice steady hands and my mind is on, on what I'm doing while I, while I draw up that drug. Okay. Technically, you should not recap the needle once you have, once you have uh, drawn up your drug. It should immediately go from being drawn up to being given as your injection. Um, the reality is that you will see a lot of people do that. And you need to be aware that once this cap has been removed off the needle the first time, it is never on there as securely as it once was. So don't be doing that, walking around with it in your pocket all day long because sure enough you're going to get busy, start doing things, bending over and this cap slips off that needle. This is in my pocket. Ouch. All of a sudden I'm getting stuck with a needle and who knows what was, what was in that. Uh, could, be, could be some sort of uh, uh, antibiotic, could be, uh, could be euthanasia solution, who knows, okay? So needle safety, syringe safety is always key. We really should only be drawing up, taking the cap off this needle, drawing up our medication and immediately giving it, not walking around with needles that are capped. And then after we have given our injection, 
This needle and syringe should immediately go into an approved sharps container. Not the trash, not, uh, not any place else. And that way it's out of the way and it's no longer a risk for anybody.